For at least the last couple of years, I've had quite a few requests to review the Escaso line of espresso machines, and for those folks, your patience is about to pay off. Your time has finally come. And for those who maybe are unaware, Escaso isn't brand new, and have had their hands in espresso machines for quite some time, even producing parts for Gaja all the way back in the 1950s. But in recent years, the Spain-based company has decided to shift their focus into building a line of espresso machines, and the one we're looking at today is called the Uno. And even though one is officially the loneliest number, the machine itself does tout a handful of useful features, like an efficient thermal block heater, PID control for temperature stability, programmable shots for consistency, and adjustable pre-infusion for additional controllability, just to name a few. So in true Spro fashion, I'll be breaking down my experience with the Uno, starting with its notable features, going into its performance and usability, and as always, its quirks and downsides. And of course, in the spirit of full disclosure, the folks at Espresso Parts and Escasa USA were kind enough to send me the Uno for review, and of course agreed to my review terms of no access to the content of this video prior to public release. But with all that out of the way, let's dive into it. First off, straight from the box, I have to say, I really do love the look of this thing. It's just the right amount of boxy, with some slight angles giving it a little character, and all the materials look and feel like they're of good quality. The body itself is made of steel and is powder coated. The switches have a nice satisfying clank, and the wood accents are a nice touch. On top of all of that, having a commercial sized 58mm portafilter really opens up the door for a lot of aftermarket baskets and tools. On its face, the digital PID is clear and easily adjustable, and can be set up to double as a timer during shots as well. Also through that front main screen you can toggle Celsius or Fahrenheit standby modes and coffee counters, but when it comes to actually brewing, you can also adjust pre-infusion, which gives you options from both starting at switch on up to 5 seconds, or having a short burst of pressure followed by a short pause. Moving on to the inside, the Uno technically functions like any other single boiler espresso machine, essentially meaning you can't pull your shots and steam at the same time, but it also doesn't use a traditional boiler, instead it uses a thermal block, which essentially is a mass of aluminum and stainless steel that contains heating elements and tubes that flash heat the water to a set temp as it passes through the block itself on the way to the group or the steam wand. Of course, there are both pros and cons to this design and engineering choice, but we'll talk more about that when we start talking about performance in just a minute. And finally, when it comes to pressure production, the Uno uses a vibration pump, which can be easily adjusted via an external screw next to the group, which is a smart design feature. When it comes to the usability and performance of the Uno, there's a lot to say, so let's start where everything basically begins. The warm up time on the Uno is lightning fast, going from room temp to brew temp in less than two minutes, and that's really one of the main benefits of using a thermal block heater. Unlike a normal boiler that needs to heat up a significant volume of water inside of it, it just needs to get the block up to temp prior to the water being pumped through it. But much like standard espresso machines, I still recommend you let it reach its temp and sit for a while before you start using it. Let all the metal around it get nice and hot, because also the group is part of the actual thermal block. From there, changing any of the machine settings is rather easy. It's just a single press to adjust the brew temperature up or down, and a double press to go deeper into settings like pre-infusion. Personally, I found myself most of the time maxing out on that setting, allowing for 5 seconds of pre-infusion prior to full pressure ramp up. From there, pulling shots can be done in two ways, manual or programmed. For manual shots, you just engage the pump by lifting up or pushing down on the coffee lever. When you've hit your desired yield, you just let go and it will return to center, effectively ending the shot. And let's say you really like that shot and you want to run it back. All you need to do is give the lever a quick flick in the direction you originally pulled, and it will run back that same shot volume, at least in theory. I will say it's not incredibly accurate, but it does often land within 5 grams or so, and I'd say that's an acceptable rate of repeatable consistency, especially for a $1400 machine. But now, let's get down to brass tacks and talk shot quality. Generally speaking, the Uno brews tasty espresso, since it hits all the basics pretty well and delivers some beautiful pulls, but having used it almost daily for the last couple of months, I did find it seems to have some limits. For one, even though the thermoblock is always pulling fresh water for your shots, it also seems to struggle to maintain heat for longer periods, which results in a rapid decrease in water temps as it runs, 
more so than your standard boiler-based options. And this for me resulted in difficulties extracting lighter roasts, sometimes ending up with sour under extracting cups, especially when compared to medium and dark roasts. So to compensate, I ended up adopting shorter ratio pulls like Ristretto's when using the Uno, and avoiding longer pulls outside of the traditional 1 to 2 double shot ratio. And this seems to also be backed up by the cappuccino recipe in the manual. But speaking of caps, let's talk milk. Much like your standard single boiler, when you're ready to steam, you have to manually switch it on, and it takes about two minutes to reach temp. And when it does, you'll hear the pump begin to work in bursts, which pushes a small amount of water through the thermal block to create consistent steam. Usability-wise, the wand itself has a good amount of movement, and the control knob allows for a tapered approach. But the very hard angle built into the wand can make it difficult to steam smaller amounts in deeper pitchers and the single hole tip leads to a lot of turbulence and some difficulty in producing a vortex in your milk. I mean, it even says in the manual that you should swirl the pitcher yourself. But once you've fully purged the wand, the steam is fairly dry, and it has a decent amount of power behind it. So with a little patience, it's still plenty capable of producing any texture you'd like, including silky smooth latte art ready microfoam. Having used the Uno almost daily for a couple of months, I think its main downsides are a combination of things that won't always be an issue for everyone. Let me explain. When I originally took it out of the box, I was fairly surprised to see a new machine shipping with a 14 gram basket as its biggest option, and I promptly swapped for a larger one. But the reason for that became clear after I determined that the thermal block heater was just not able to hold a consistently high enough temp to properly extract longer shots and lighter roasts, let alone larger doses. I mean, less coffee is always going to be easier to extract, that's just math. But all this together leads me to believe that they know the limits of this machine, and are clearly pointing in the direction of shorter shots, lower doses, and probably darker roasts, which is what I ended up stumbling upon after taking the scenic route. But that's not to say that this machine isn't capable of producing quality espresso. Instead, it leads me to believe that it was designed and produced more so around traditional European espresso culture more so than the current day modern light roasts that a lot of folks are brewing now. In the end, I think the Escaso Uno is a handsome, well-made, well-built, and capable, with an asterisk, piece of home coffee kit. At its $1,400 price point, it's got a lot of the features and programming that many home espresso enthusiasts are looking for. But the main component where it gets its namesake, its one or Uno thermo block, is what's really holding it back from its ability to be a machine that can please every taste and work with every coffee. Now, just so we're clear, I don't think that makes it bad. Instead, it just narrows down its audience to those looking for a quick, capable, attractive machine for some traditional espresso or milk drinks. But with all that said, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Escaso Uno, and what are your thoughts on Thermoblock Espresso Machines? I'd love to hear from your experiences if you're an owner of the Uno, or any Thermoblock for that matter, so drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday, Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a channel member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.